how important is a horse's start? Well, one of the best horsemen I ever knew, Ray Hunt, told me that a start isn't something. Oftentimes it's everything. Because so many horses today don't have a future. They've only got a past because they didn't get a great start. Okay. What does natural colt starting mean to you? Natural colt starting means to me that it is done in a transitioni transitional way that the horse doesn't even know. It, it becomes his idea. He doesn't, he's not even thinking, I'm in a, uh oh, I'm in, uh, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a sheep and I'm about to be shorn. You know, I'm, it's like this wonderful, beautiful, seducing experience that is so, so nice that the horse wants to come back for it again the next day. And if the horse's mother was watching, she would be going, that's my boy right there. That's my baby. And I'm excited about it. So that's it. That natural and beautiful should go, to get, go hand in hand. But at the same time, it should be um, possibly exciting because it's unpredictable. You know, even the horse doesn't know what he's out to do. And, and the leadership part of what we, what we should be able to do as, as a horseman is we should know what the horse is apt to do by, read, by reading the horse, reading his personality, giving it all the signs that we've got, and then guiding that horse and staying on this side of trouble so the horse never gets into trouble. What do you think is the hardest thing to get a handle on as far as where the horse is emotionally or mentally when, when you're starting one? What's, what's the part that's the hardest to get your bearings in? Or does it just all fall into place? I think that I think the the easiest trap that most people fall into is they want to do things dogmatic. So whatever they did with the last colt, they want to just follow that uh, you know step by step procedure, rather than having a skeleton that's got a definite shape and is very flexible. And so the flexibility has to come into the horse's personality, which is based on four things: his innate characteristics, his learned behavior his environmental influences in his spirit. So, and that, that will change. I mean, by the time you're done, an hour later, his personality will be different than it was when you started. So then the next day, you've got to read that again. So to me, not making assumptions and reading where that horse is at. And I think where I made a lot of mistakes when I first started is I was going to do it to the colt, not with the colt and for the colt. Who should or shouldn't start their own horse? Well, in an ideal world, um, this, is, this is an area of expertise. It's not, it's not as it used to be known, you know, thought of as something that if you're young and dumb and, you know, and indispensable, uh, you're, the, you're the cult starter. Uh, and that was me, because I was, I was a professional bucking horse rider, and people went, yeah, let him run start, let him put that first ride on there, you know. Um, so this is where the... The whole idea of the, of the, of the of instead of breaking and training a colt, it's starting and developing. Start a relationship so it can develop into a partnership. And it, it, I think it's as, as precocious a situation as a, as a computer programmer. You wouldn't want me <laughs> programming your computer. You know, you'd really want the very best of the best of the best. So the challenge is that oftentimes the best of the best of the best are at an age where, you know, the, 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 the mind is willing, the heart's willing, but the body can't fall through, <laughs> nor should, you know, should gray on gray makes black, black and, or makes broken bones. So this is where, to me, the, the ideal is that you, you have somebody, like Tom Dorrance was a great coach for me, starting hundreds of cults. You know, and it was like, you know, well, I would do a little softer here. I'd do a little more there. I'd get, I'd get caught up there, you know. So that, that's what I like to see is, is under guidance. You know, that's, and so someone has to be, Tom told me one time that you have to be as, as, as athletic as a monkey, as a chimpanzee, as, as brave as a, a lion tamer, you know, as, uh, as strong as a, a he-man, as, as calm as uh, a Zen Buddhist, you have to be, you know, I mean, there's like all these attributes. It's like, holy smokes, <laughs> you, you know, to, to do it right, to really do it justice to where it's, 
and and that's where it's it's an art. It should be an art form where you try to get the most done with the least amount of effort on either either the horses or the humans. Do you feel that those things um, embody where you're at now going into Road to the Horse, or do you feel that is it a comfortable spot for you to be the person starting the colt at sure. this stage? I still feel I've got plenty of of nous and athletic ability. Um, and I've got more judgment, good judgment than I've ever had in my life. So you get good judgment by living through and experiencing your own bad judgment. Um, so if you put principles in front of purpose to take the time it takes, it, it usually has a pretty good way of If done out. correctly and patiently, is colt starting any more dangerous than any other aspect of working with a horse? There's always an element of there's always an element of it being um, some slight danger there. There's always an element where the the biggest element of danger comes in is the person who can't read the situation. They can't see that this horse is about to do you know if it if it goes right brain and acts like a prey animal that its survival mode is extreme enough that this could be really bad. And a horse, you know, I've hardly ever seen a horse that would go out of its way to hurt somebody. But I've certainly seen a horse turn into a tornado and somebody land right in the middle of the tornado. And this is where, you know, Ronnie Willis told me, you've got to be sure. There's only one thing about being sure is that you're sure. So there's no guarantees. And you, you, you're, you're looking for all the signs. And you've got to kind of know whether you've got something here with your innate characteristics or even the learned behavior is is apt to be um, reactionary versus responsive, and that's as long as you've got a horse in it, and it's like if you get all green lights, I mean it, it's something that just goes along pretty darn nicely. So it should should go. You got you've got to have probability on your side. Walk us through the process when you meet a, a new colt. What's the first thing you do when you walk in with them? I think the first thing I try to do is feel of them and feel for them so we can feel together. And what I used to do is I used to walk in and pop their bubble, maybe start running them around or doing something to them. Well, I'm apt now to walk in and walk the other way or, or if he's curious, just back off and let that curiosity draw to me or... You know, um, it takes oftentimes it takes me a lot less time these days because I'm I do the opposite of what I used to do when I had young man's disease. So pretty much is I allow the horse uh, to come to me, and then if that's not the case, then then I've got it. Then I'll do whatever it takes to cause that to be his idea. And and what I've found is um, that if, that if the less I do in the beginning, the quicker it goes. And what I used to do, for example, I did a lot of colt starting clinics. I'd start 20 colts in a, in, in a weekend. Somebody would walk the colt in, hand the colt to me, and the first thing I'd do is jerk the halter off him. Start shooing him around and say, okay, now I'm going to teach you to come to me. The horse was already asking, well, who are you? And if I'd have just let him sniff on me for a few minutes and walk around with the lead rope, he'd have already been connected. And I, I used to destroy that connection. Then I had to think I had to build it. So that's when I had young man's disease. It sounds like you think of cult starting and the knowledge of cult starting almost as a heritage or a, a thing to be passed passed down from you know generation to generation. Is that is that the reason why you decided to compete in Road to the Horse? Partly. Um, first of all, I want to. I, I, yes, I actually that's probably the, the answer. I want to share this beautiful approach that's been shared with me. And it's 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 an it's it's an art form, and it's something worth you know keeping as a legacy. When I was in Clements, California, we had a the Pirelli Horse Ranch, and it had a sign out in front that said the Pirelli Horse Ranch, the foundation station, specializing in the lost art of starting horses. That's what it said out in front. And uh, that was you know I, I really that was that was you know we'd start three to five hundred colts there every year, and. It, was, it just got to where it was, you know, systematic, and, and, and we just had, it just went so slick. It was, just, <laughs> it just was like after a while, it was unbelievable, you know. E Equus Magazine came out one time and said, okay, you know, where's 
some cults that have been started. And I said, well, there's some right there, you know, because they would come in every week. And so they, they went and picked one. I said, okay, start this one. In 45 minutes, I was doing leads and lead changes on it. Hmm. You know, it, I mean, it was a, a, a particularly nice Gibson, one. Gibson, yeah. You know, I mean, everything, but I mean, he was, you know, amiable and everything went along good. But there had been a time I could have poked him in the ribs and, and had him upset and scared of me and defensive and reactionary. But if you just go with them, off it goes. So, you know, this is something that, you know, that Tom shared with me that was like, put your heart in your hand and touch your horse, horse with your heart. Don't do these things to the horse. It's not about the techniques. The techniques are, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, wax on, wax off. There's, there's certain things you've got to have is skill and, and you know, and it, all that kind of stuff. But if you'll, if you'll do it at the horse's pace, whatever that is, I mean, it, it usually goes so not so slick, it's just unbelievable. And like Tom said, it looks like magic, but it's not, it's not supernatural, it's supremely natural. So that's what I want to share is something that's supremely natural.